Hello there. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to Decaf Map ASMR. And a very warm welcome if you are new here. I hope that you are taking good care of yourself at this time and that this finds you well. I thought that today we could take some time to relax, 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 and ramble a little bit about geometry proofs. Geometry proofs. This was a requested topic, and before we get to specific proofs, I wanted to first make a video with some encouragement and just some random thoughts, tips, tricks, stuff like that. So this video will kind of just neither be here nor there, but whether or not you're actually learning this stuff, I hope that it can offer a little bit of relaxation. And if you need the sleep, I hope that this helps you to nod off to sleep and maybe give you some relaxing tingles, 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 tingles. So my main focus is to just slow down, have a moment of quiet peace, 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 and along the way, So, a friend of ours here on this channel says that they are struggling with geometry proofs, and I wanted to encourage you and anyone else and let you know that practice will definitely make things easier. And that you're not alone. A lot of times, geometry proofs are really the first time that we talk about proofs at all in math. And it's the first time that we move away from direct calculations, calculations, or solving for a variable like we do in algebra. And instead, we now want to show that a statement is true. And so, I think the first thing to note is what it actually means to prove that a statement is true. So a lot of times, the thing we're trying to prove is some kind of statement in geometry, let's say, that something is always true. So it's not enough to just show one example is true. Because what if the example that you choose is just a special case and all of the other examples are not true? It's not enough provide an example of a statement to prove it. So that's one concept. The only time that you want just one example is to show something is not always true. So to disprove it, aka the counterexample. So if you're trying to show that, let's say, a statement says something something is always true, if you find one example where it's not true, you have disproved that statement. Logically, you've shown that it's not always, always true 
because you found one example where it's not true. So that would be the only time where one example would be strong enough. So how then do we show that something is always true? Well, you have to rely on puzzle pieces and connect them in a logical way. So if the puzzle pieces are always true and you do something mathematically allowed or correct with that statement and you just keep building logical steps together to get an equivalent statement of what you're trying to prove, then you have proven whatever you're trying to prove. So it really relies on the acceptance of truth from the core statements, axioms, things that we accept as true, perhaps theorems, things that we've already proven or somebody has proven is true. And then we can call on those things to then work with it, to then get the statement that that we want. So like I said, when we first learn about proofs, it's all about putting these pieces together, which can feel very overwhelming at first, and it can be tricky to know where to start. So let me reassure you that a lot of times there's not just one way to prove something. And don't forget to have fun with this process. My biggest hint for these kinds of problems is to just write out everything that you know. Facts or statements or theorems that you've already talked about in class or that you've studied, or that you already know to be true, write those pieces down and make sure that you can truly justify why that statement is true. Then, when you can look at all of those pieces, you can then maybe use a little bit of algebra, combine a few equations, and work with a little bit to get what it is that you are looking for. So, sometimes it helps to just write out, write out all theorems or statements related to your thing that you're trying to prove. So, making a note about what shape So you might be working with circles, polygons, triangles, lines, angles, that kind of stuff. And also note if you're trying to prove something about similarity, congruence, maybe a measure of an angle or the angle itself. Are you talking about lengths of sides? That kind of stuff. So, it is important to be familiar with the basic notation. So, just keep that in mind. Maybe this ramble seems a little bit basic or simple, but that really is the beauty of mathematics. Mathematics, mathematics. Have fun. Don't forget to have fun. I know a lot of times when we're doing this in the context of homework, it's just about getting from point A to point B. But allow yourself to write some statements and see if they will be helpful. That is why a lot of times I want to focus on the concepts, because math is a universal language. So one teacher might like one thing one way, another teacher might like it another way, they might have different notations and different expectations, etc. And of course, adapt and follow to what your teacher wants. But at the core, don't forget that math itself is a very beautiful language. And at the core, it relies purely on 
So, bottom line for proofs, as long as you can justify every step, you are good to go, okay? So, I told you this was going to be a little bit of a ramble, but I really just wanted to send this encouragement first, because like with all things in math, sometimes it's just a simple piece that's missing and it makes you think you don't know anything and sometimes that's really just taking a step back and going to the basics so let me just give you a very basic example first if you happen to be learning geometry and working through proofs let me know if you want to work through a question together um, I don't have a geometry playlist yet series going, so that is definitely something we can build, but um, let's go through something that is a very common setup, whether for geometry or um, even SAT math, and this is just going to be a basic little doodle sketch kind of thing. To emphasize that notation is important and to know what are we working with. So let's say we have two lines. Lines go to infinity in both directions. They can just be extended as far as we want. And I'll just call this line L and line M. And we know that two points define a line. There is a unique straight line, that is, that goes through this point and this point. So I'll just call it A and B, and same for this, C and D. Any other point here would be redundant. It's they're all collinear, all on the same line, but it only takes two to define a line. That is one of the axioms of Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry. So let's say we have line L, which you can also write as line AB, like this. This denotes a line, it goes through points A and B, like that, and same for C and D. So see, already we have different notations for the same thing. And let's say we have another, um, another line that goes through both. Okay, so I'll call that line K. And I guess I should have mentioned line L and M are parallel, so parallel. Meaning they will never intersect if I were to extend this all the way to infinity in both directions. They will never touch. But K crosses both of them. It's also called a traversal. So I can do the same thing. I have A, B, C, D. So I'll just put an E and F here. Just for consistency. And now, notice that K will touch. L right here, forming this angle. So I'll call that vertex or that intersection G, and this intersection from K and M, I'll just call that H. So we have H, G. Line H, G is the same thing as line K, which is also the same thing as F, E, F, G. These are all collinear points, so you can define that however you want. And we're talking about the entire line that extends, not a segment. So, this setup is pretty classic with the traversal here. On an SAT problem, you might talk about the measure of an angle being X and Maybe this part is, you know, 2x minus 5, and you need to solve for 
um, the degrees or something of an angle. But just continuing on with some basic notation or just stuff to keep an eye out for. This angle right here, an angle is where you have two rays, which is where you have a vertex and then it goes off to a one direction, so not both directions. One direction, and you have two rays that intersect at a vertex. Those form an angle, so like this angle right there. This angle can be written as the angle F, G, B, or B, G, F. The only important piece is that the vertex is the thing in the middle. If you're going to write it this way, make sure the G is in the middle, the middle letter. And depending on the context, you might even just write it as angle G. But that's important to know that it's this angle you're referring to and not, say, this part. So that's more contextual. But that's what that would mean. So this angle G written like that would probably make more sense in the context of a triangle if this is like G right there. Something like that. Then that would be angle G. So there would be no, you know, confusion with that. But you can do the same thing. This angle is HGB, AGH, that kind of thing. And what's cool about this setup is you can play around with different facts or statements. And it turns out that there's a lot of um, kind of equal measured angles in this setup. So, first of all, I forgot to mention, this is for the angle FGB, you're talking about the actual angle itself. But if you want the degrees or the radians, you would talk about the measure of angle FGB. So that would be something like 45 degrees, maybe a little bit bigger, 60 degrees. You could use your protractor to measure it. But that kind of thing, you're talking about the actual angle is the measure of the angle and you might even see this with different notation but just make sure you pay attention to what you're actually trying to s prove or solve here so one thing that's really cool to notice is in this setup if these two are parallel you have a traversal this angle the measure of that angle is actually equal to the measure of this one these are opposite and this is also equal to this, and this is also equal to this. So there's a lot of um, opposite angles going, and this and this are equal because L and M are uh, parallel. So there's a lot of like symmetry going, and as you can imagine, the counterparts, this is the same as this the measure of this, and this, and this. So all the green parts are equal, and all the pink parts are also equal. But you don't have to just take my word for it, we can actually mess around with this a little bit. Um, so this would just kind of, not a rigorous proof or anything, but you could use the fact that this angle plus this angle makes a line, and a line has 180 degrees. So the measure of angle F, G, B plus the measure of F, G, A. Oops, excuse me here. I bumped into this one. Equals 180 degrees. And the reasoning for that is that they are supplementary angles, meaning they add up to form a straight line. So, supplementary, I 
think that's how you spell it, supplementary. So you would say this angle and this angle are supplementary. And then you could say this angle and this angle are, are also supplementary because they form line K. So this is just to prove that oh, I should probably write what I'm proving. Silly me. Prove, just a quick little proof that um, the measure of angle FGB equals the measure of angle this angle equals A G H something like this so I would start with something like this because that's something that's related we're talking about measures of angles here and I also know that this angle, this measure of FGA plus the measure of AGH is also equal to 180 degrees. So these two are also supplementary. You just kind of rotate the page and you see that this angle and this angle form line K. So they're also supplementary. And then from here, that's all we really need. We can do a quick little substitution here because I noticed that I have the measure of angle FGA here and here. So if you want, you could even let X equal the measure of FGA. So I just replaced this with X with x. And I do a little bit of algebra now. And so, you know, I can, from this one, I, from this first statement, I can say that x equals 180 degrees mi minus measure of, uh, just moving this, f, g, b, and then substituting this x into this part. Um, so then substitute into x for this. So then you would substitute into 2, 180 degrees minus measure of angle FGB, um, plus measure angle AGH equals 180 degrees. And then at this point you can subtract 180 on both sides. So this becomes 0. And you can move this over here, so you get measure of angle AGH equals measure of angle FGB. And now that I wrote it out by substitution, I actually <laughs> also realized you can just set the two 180s equal to each other. So you'd have measure of angle FGB plus X equals the measure of angle a, G, H plus X. And so you could just cancel the X on both sides. And then you're left with the measure of this angle equals the measure of this angle. Either way, not a big deal. Not a formal proof by any means. And in fact, a lot of times you can actually just accept that these are opposite angles. Like this and this are across from each other. And opposite angles have um, equal measurements, but just to see it once through, to prove to yourself that that's actually true instead of just looking at it and saying, oh, they look alike, you can actually prove it for yourself just once, and that's good enough. Um, and then just make sure that, you know, Depending on if your teacher accepts that as a true statement, opposite angles have equal measurements, um, or if they want you to just prove it like this. But once you have, you can now use this fact. So the measure of this thing is equal to the measure of this thing. That kind of thing. So, I don't know if this is helpful or not. This is definitely not like a formal way of writing it when you first do this in geometry. Um, most of the time you just go like this, you make like a little chart, and you take your step, and then you 
have a justification. So as long as you have a logical, true statement for this, like I kind of sketched that out by saying supplementary, if I were to say that, I would say FGB and FGA are supplementary, and combined, they form line L, which has 180 degrees, because lines have a measure of 180 degrees. Um, if you kind of then end up proving opposite angles are, um, have the same measure, you can then use that as a justification for more complicated, uh, proofs, but I thought that this would be kind of a nice little starting point, and on that note, um, I wanted to separate the geometry part of this from the algebra, so note that, yeah, this part started looking a little more complicated, but it's still just basic algebra, and so you might choose to do it this way, but then, you know, your friend over in the, in the, um, seat right next to you decides, hey, that's too complicated, I don't need to do that, I'm just gonna do it this way, just take your time and find the way suits you. It doesn't matter at the end of the day what you choose to let be what piece. As long as it logically makes sense, there will always be somebody that says, oh, that's too much, or I don't like that, or whatever that's on them. Just make sure that you logically make sense of what it is that, you know, you're trying to solve. But if you are struggling with this part, and this is actually algebra, and maybe you very much understand the geometry part of it, the setup here, and just need to review a little bit of algebra. So, you know, math really builds on itself. Sometimes it's just a small little knot that you need to untangle, and then everything becomes clear. And sometimes we just need to go back to the very, very to send this little bit of encouragement if you have a specific proof, like I said, that you want to come and visit. We can kind of work through the logic flow of that, um, but have fun with this. Have fun, have fun with this. Geometry proofs are meant to be fun, and really the first time you kind of step away from the algebra and now put proofs together. And so, just as a little quick note about the SAT part, I mentioned it when I was first starting to draw this, but, you know, a question might be like, this angle is x degrees, and this angle is, I don't know, 2x minus 7 degrees. What is the measure of angle CHE or something like that? So then you would have to just draw on the knowledge that this equals this, which equals this, which equals this. So you would set the algebra x equals 2x minus 7 and solve to get x equals 7. So it's sneaky, it doesn't look like they're the same. But then you would use your geometry facts to get to that. Um, or you might set up this part to be 180 minus x or something like that, or this angle is three times this angle. You just translate that into an algebra question. So, I hope that this was relaxing. It's kind of random. We will come back and do some more math very, very soon. You know that I jump around between rambles and uh, specific problems and explanations as well. So, I just wanted to send you lots and lots of love, support, give yourself a lot of grace, take the time, take your time, and have fun. <laughs>